Starting off this countdown, we have When Duty Calls. I mean, when you gotta go, you gotta go. You would just hope that no one was around to catch you. Don't want an old lady walking her dog to run into you, popping a squat behind a bush and letting one go. And you really don't want a Google car to pass by and catch you in the act, and then publish it online for everyone to see. Because that's actually what happened to this guy. Poor dude was trying so hard to be discreet and he just couldn't win. What's worse is that his company's vehicle wasn't blurred. So now if his work sees this, it's probably very easy to identify him. In our ninth spot, we have the disappearance. On November 7th of 1997, 40 year old William Moult was reported missing after going out one night and never returning home. Sadly, the police had no leads as to where William could be or what happened to him. The case went cold for 20 years. That's when Google Earth found William. Basically, a housing development manager was using Google Earth to check out some properties when he saw something strange in a pond near the homes. Turns out this weird thing was William's car. The police ended up dragging the pond and retrieved his car. William's body was found in there as well. The only mystery that remains is how William ended up driving into the pond in the first place. In our eighth spot, we have the secret bunker. Hidden in the New Mexico desert is a secret bunker surrounding surrounded by strange symbols. These symbols were thought to be done by the works of aliens. Anyways, the bunker is located close to these symbols and it's said to be the alien space cathedral of the Church of Scientology. Former Scientologist Ron Hubbard says that the symbols mark a return point for reincarnation. The bunker even has its own private airstrip for the church's leaders. In 2005, it was confirmed that this bunker does indeed exist. This bunker is said to be the place where members can travel to in the future from other places in the universe. Moving on to number seven, we have the Blood Red Lake. Just outside of Sadr City in Iraq, there is a lake that is completely red. Hence why it was given the name Blood Red Lake. The reason as to why it's red remains a mystery. But of course, we have some theories. One is that pollution or sewage caused it to turn red. Another is that it's a result of the water treatment process. Whereas others believe that the lake is red from blood running into it from a slaughterhouse. To this day, no one has offered an official explanation as to why this river looks like blood. In our sixth spot today, we have the oil refinery. The Hungarian oil refinery, Sasalambata, is so private that they wanted Google Earth to block them out. But instead of blurring it or barring it with a black box, they asked Google to have it colored green, and no one knows why. Now it just looks like a weird football field. A lot of people are wondering what they're trying to protect or hide from us. Hopefully, they aren't trying to hide some illegal or shady activity that they're into. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the French nuclear facility. La Hague is a nuclear fuel reprocessing facility in France that opened in 1976. It is responsible for treating nuclear fuel from several countries. But here's the thing. Since 1997, Greenpeace has been trying to shut it down. They have been dumping 1 million liters of liquid radioactive waste per day into the ocean. That is extremely toxic for the environment. What's even more messed up is that the site wasn't always blurred out. But when people heard about the whole Greenpeace controversy, they had Google Earth blur out their location. This has led people to believe that they are still dumping this radioactive waste into the ocean. They just don't want people to see what they're doing. In our fourth spot, we have the prisons. Now, there are a number of prisons that are blurred out on Google Earth, including the Beaumet prison in France or the Almira Correctional Facility. Now, there's a number of reasons for this. The main one being so that criminals don't figure out the layout of these prisons. They are afraid that they will use this information to plan an escape. In fact, this actually happened a couple of times. Following a successful jailbreak at the Beaumet prison, France's Prime Minister of Justice was like, it's because they knew the layout of the building. So this resulted in the prison being blurred, along with a number of other prisons. In our third spot, we have the invisible jet. Just last year, a Google Earth user discovered something that sent the internet into a frenzy. The user claimed to have found an invisible US Air Force plane hiding in plain sight. Pun intended. Check it out.
crazy, isn't it? Now this was spotted at an Air Force base in Texas. Either this plane is invisible or semi-invisible because we can still see it, or Google Maps blurred it out to try and keep it a secret. Others say that it's just a glitch or that it's Wonder Woman's plane or that it's just a B-1 bomber with heat haze coming off of it. But I don't know, a lot of conspiracy theorists think otherwise. What do you think though? Let me know in the comments below. In our second spot, we have the giant sea monster. We really don't know what's going on in our ocean. Like over 80% of it remains unexplored and with all the nuclear waste that's going in it, who knows what kind of beasts lurk out there? Well, one of them might have been caught on camera. This image is what appears to be a massive sea beast. We don't know for sure what exactly it is, but it was spotted off the coast of Antarctica's Deception Island. That's right, the island is called Deception Island. It's kind of eerie. Anyways, theories range from this thing being an underwater UFO to the Kraken, even the Loch Ness Monster, which... If it's Nessie, then what is it doing all the way over there? Anyways, I will say it looks an awful lot like a giant squid. Who's trying to make a trip over there to figure it out in person? Maybe we can catch this beast. I'm just kidding. No thank you. And in our number one spot today, we have the escaped killer. As you know from part one of this video series, uh, Google Earth is a snitch. You gotta watch out because an escaped killer who was on the run for nearly 20 years was caught, all thanks to Google Earth. The man's name is Gio Achino Gamino, I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong, but he is a convicted murderer, mafia member, and one of Italy's most wanted gangsters. He had been sentenced to life in prison for a murder he committed in 1998. In 2002, he managed to escape prison. He then went on to live in Spain under a fake alias. Now, let me explain how he got caught. So basically, someone tipped off authorities saying that he was living there and that he owned a restaurant. So they looked it up on Google Earth, and although his face was blurred, they saw him outside his restaurant. They ended up tracking him down and he was arrested on December 17th of 2021, so fairly recently. In at number 10, we have the Boneyard in Arizona. Tucson, Arizona is the final resting place of many old airplanes. At the Davis Monthan Air Force Base is the world's largest so-called Boneyard for retired planes. It houses some 4,000 in this desert location. While not first discovered by Google Earth, the Google satellite images sparked worldwide interest in this eerie yet fascinating location which has since become a popular tourist attraction. The base hosts all kinds of interesting aviation models in various states of disarray, including the notorious B-52 bomber. I for one really want to go there. This next discovery is a fantastic Google Earth find. In our number 9 spot today we have the bunker. If you were to take a nice little scroll through the deserts of New Mexico, at some point Point you'd see something etched into the ground. They appear to be two large diamonds that are surrounded by a pair of overlapping circles. Okay, likely not a naturally occurring situation, so what could it be? Maybe an ancient geoglyph? Maybe some sort of cool secret Area 51 style place? No, of course it's just allegedly the site of some hidden bunker that belongs to the Church of Scientology. Apparently this cult uses these symbols to guide Scientologists who are returning to Earth after fleeing a planet's Armageddon. Okay. Sure, there are other examples of strange and hidden places that somehow link back to this cult, so it really has me wondering just how many properties and areas that they have and what they're up to. Maybe that explanation really is the truth behind these symbols, but what if it's not? Despite how controversial this cult is, they've managed to grow quite widespread and they've gained some quite well-known people over the years, like Tom Cruise and John Travolta. <laughs> So random. In our number eight spot today, we have the cauldron. Google Earth can basically take you anywhere except for the areas they, of course, have blocked off for a variety of reasons. And when I say basically anywhere, sometimes I mean even the most absurd places, including right to the edge of a boiling cauldron of lava. That's right, you can head right to the edge of the volcano that is located on an island in the Vanuatu chain in the South Pacific. It is cool because it's likely the closest I'll ever get to seeing this kind of view in real life 
but it's also terrifying to look into that cavern that's filled with bright hot magma. Like even just looking at this photo you can almost feel the heat and the panic of being at the mouth of a volcano. Very cool but also very scary. In our number 7 spot today we have the Nevada Triangle. This image from Google Maps captures a spooky symbol that is lurking in the deserts of Nevada. I think conspiracy theorists have forever ruined triangles just in general, but this large one with all the circles inside, coupled with the minimal answers on what it is, definitely makes for a bit of an eerie sight. Right now, the most popular theory as to what this could be is a bombing target. Apparently close by is an air force base, so that theory truly would make quite a bit of sense. It could also be some sort of abandoned airstrip perhaps, but of course with any mystery on the internet, there are more very wild theories out there. Of course there's the obligatory it's aliens theory, along with some sort of Illuminati idea, but it wouldn't be the internet without it. In our number 6 spot today we have the fire. As the satellites and little cars go by that document the imagery used on Google Maps, they can't exactly predict or control who or what is going to be happening in the area captured. Sometimes it might capture someone who will eventually be blurred out on their front lawn. Sometimes it captures accidents, and in this case it captured an absolutely raging field fire in Arkansas. It would already be terrifying from the ground, but seeing it from this vantage point really shows how large and powerful it is. Someone on Reddit made a good point saying that it appears as though there are people on the south side, which likely means that the fire is contained and controlled thankfully, but that doesn't really make it any less cool or interesting to see. In our number 5 spot today we have the Valley of Dolls. Google Maps, especially the street view, is such a great way to look around a place and kind of get your bearings before you even get there. I mean, I remember almost 8 years ago now, before I moved to Toronto, I spent hours digitally walking around the street seeing my home, where I was going to go to school, all that jazz. It was super exciting. But sometimes you walk around a city so unlike your own that it absolutely shocks you, and that is likely what would happen if you were to just stumble upon the town or village of Nagoro in Japan, which is known as the Valley of Dolls. A woman named Ayano Tsukimi grew up in the village and remembers a time when it was full of families and other children just like her, but during her years in secondary school, she and her family moved to Osaka. Ayano continued to grow up, she married and had her own kids all the while her parents ended up moving back to the town. After her mother passed away, she also moved back to the village in order to help care for her father, and this is when she realized that the population of the town had dropped drastically since her time here as a child. While living here and trying to keep her garden free of crows, she made a scarecrow that resembled her father and she placed it outside. When she realized that those living in the village began to mistake the scarecrow for her father, she had an idea to commemorate those in the village who had passed away away with a scarecrow and Boom! 350 dolls later, the town became an attraction for travelers and journalists. It's a bit eerie to peer through on Google Maps, but when the full story is revealed, it gets way less sinister and actually kind of sweet. In our number 4 spot today, we have the Costa Concordia. The Costa Concordia was a huge ship with 17 decks, 6 restaurants, and a 3 story theater. The ship was big enough to hold a whopping 4,200 passengers, so there were a lot of people on this boat on January 13th. 2012. On that day, the boat's captain wanted to sail a little closer to the island of Isla del Giglio than he normally would so that he could impress and salute the residents. He turned off the ship's alarm for the computer navigation system, which turned out to be just as terrible of an idea as you would think it is. He thought he knew the waters well enough to navigate by sight, but when the ship struck an underwater rock, things took a deadly turn. The ship capsized and sank, which unfortunately ended up taking the lives of some of the passengers on board. The captain, who was responsible for the accident in the first place, made one more awful mistake when he abandoned ship while passengers were still stuck on board. The recovery for the ship was the largest of its kind as the huge ship had been entirely dismantled. You might be wondering why on earth I just told you an entire shipwreck story, and that is because both the wreck as well as the subsequent rescue efforts were visible on Google Earth for quite some time. The satellite imagery probably isn't even as near as terrifying as it must have been to be close during those terrifying days, but it does give us an idea of the size of this disaster. In our number 3 spot today we have the crater. 
Space is very cool, but for every cool and interesting thing I learn about it, I also learn one equally or even more terrifying thing about it as well. It's a very scary place and we truly have no control over the powers of it, which is exactly why this startling image found on Google Earth is an unsettling one. Somewhere in northern Arizona, there is a mark that is like an Earth scar and it serves as a reminder of a 50,000 year old meteor strike. When I call it a mark or a scar, I am greatly understating it as this thing is a huge huge crater known as the Behringer Crater. It's the result of a 150 foot slab of nickel iron that smashed into the earth with the exploding force of two and a half million tons of TNT. Yeah, this sure makes me glad I wasn't around 50,000 years ago. This natural disaster caused this natural landmark that serves as our reminder of just how small we really are. In our number two spot today, we have the scene. This is an image that went viral with people saying that if you typed in these certain coordinates that you will see what people think is a man and dragging a body down a dock and leaving a bloody trail behind. That would be gruesome, wouldn't it? When looking at the image, it does seem compelling and that is pretty much what it looks like, although it's definitely still a little unclear. In fact, it was so compelling that Snopes actually did an article on it. The dock is located in the Netherlands and according to their research into it, Snopes claims that the photo is just a few people walking and they are likely accompanied by a sort of brown dog who may have just jumped into the water and then left some watermarks, thus the reasoning for the red stained wood. That is definitely a less sinister explanation and it's the one I'm hoping is true. In our number one spot today, we have the pond. Davy Lee Niles was 72 years old in 2006 when he disappeared. Sadly, for almost a decade, the case went cold as no one could find him or his car or even figure out what might have happened to him. That was until someone was decorating a Christmas tree in 2015 and was high up on a lift and they spotted something deep within a pond nearby. That something they spotted turned out to be something that had also been visible on Google Maps for years and in the end, it was the car that belonged to Davy. And when the authorities went to recover it, they were able to find his body inside. The car wasn't visible before because at ground level it's just too mercury. While the satellite image taken from Google Maps makes it quite clear that there is something there, not too many people are taking a virtual tour around this body of water. Thankfully that person in 2015 wasn't only aware of their surroundings, but they said something when they saw something, and it was able to lead to closure for the family of Davy. Starting off this countdown we have Alexi Miller's house. Alexi Miller is the chairman of Russia's largest company and world's biggest biggest natural gas producer. If you try and look up his house on Google Maps, well, good luck. It is completely blurred out. In fact, we don't even have an image of it. And that's due to privacy reasons and safety concerns. I mean, this guy isn't everyone's biggest fan. Being that wealthy and big of a public figure, you don't know who's going to come for you. Now, I mentioned this before, but prisons are blurred out to prevent people or prisoners from breaking in or out of the facility. Google Earth literally shows you the entire layout of the place. So Miller probably has similar reasoning as to why he wants this place blurred. Someone could easily use Google Earth to figure out the best way to break into this dude's house. It would also show if he has cameras around his premise and where. So yeah, it's a little revealing. Moving on to number nine, we have Baker Lake. Located in none of it, Canada, Google Earth is letting you see none of it. Get it? Like none of it? <laughs> Sorry, I love my buns. So if you look it up on Google Maps, it's weird because you see just a black strip covering a large area near the lake. What's it blocking? Again, we don't know for sure, but we have some crazy conspiracies. One theory is that the strip is concealing extraterrestrial beacons that help the navigation of the crafts, or that it's a craft landing strip. I don't know. They also say that this area would be perfect for the beacons since snow creates a powerful electromagnetic field that helps send a better signal. What do you think though? Let me know in the comments below. In our eighth spot, we have the Pacific Northwest Blur. Here is a view of the area close to the Washington, Oregon border. And would you look at that? There's a random patch blacked out. To this day, no one knows what that is. But something is there that Google doesn't want us to see. In fact, some people believe that it is a HARP site or H-A-A-R-P. HARP is said to be a military program that weaponizes weather and causes natural disasters like floods, earthquakes, droughts, you get it. Now, some people have actually traveled to that area to see what's up, but unfortunately haven't been able to find anything. Kind of suspicious, like what does Google know that we don't know. A whole lot, that's what. In our seventh spot, we have 
2207 Seymour Avenue. This is the address to a home located in Cleveland, Ohio, a home in which a horrific crime took place, a crime that people don't like to talk about. From 2002 to 2004, Adriel Castro kidnapped three young women, Michelle Knight, Amanda Berry, and Georgina De Jesus. He kept them captive in his home until 2013 when Amanda Berry escaped with her daughter and contacted the police. Police came to his house and rescued the other women. This house has since been blurred on Google Maps due to the horrific crimes that took place inside. In fact, it was given the name, the House of Horrors. But in 2013, it was actually demolished to help the victims move on from their traumatizing past. In our sixth spot, we have Valencia City. Located in the Philippines, Valencia City is one of the largest and most populated cities in the province of Budkanan. It's home to over 190,000 people. It's even a popular tourist spot. But if you want to find it on Google Earth, you can't. The whole city is just blurred out. This was apparently done under government orders. Valencia City is home to their government's headquarters. It's said to house a top secret missile defense program. Others say that they do missile testing there, but that hasn't been proven, so we really don't know. It's just weird that the whole city is blurred out, not just a single area. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Amchitka Island. Located in Alaska, sections of this island are blurred out and no one really knows why this is. But it may have to do with the nuclear testing that once took place there. From the 1950s to the 1970s, this island was the site of US underground nuclear testing. Nowadays, they are running tests to see if the island has any radioactive leakage there. If there isn't, then in 2025, it could become a wildlife reserve. But again, why is half the island blurred out? Maybe that's the section where the nuclear testing took place. But why is it still blurred? A lot of people think that the military is doing some suspicious illegal activities there. We just don't know what. Moving on at number four, we have Vokel Air Base. Located in the Netherlands, we have the Vokel Air Base, which is a military air base used by the Royal Netherlands Air Force. According to former Dutch Prime Minister, there are 22 US nuclear bombs being stored in bunkers of this airspace, which is one of the many reasons as to why it appears pixelated on Google Earth. You got thermonuclear bombs, all the way to bombs that are said to be four times powerful as the ones used on the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Now, for the longest time, the place was just rumored to have nukes. It wasn't known for sure. That was until 2013 when the prime minister let it slip. He said, and I quote, I would never have thought those silly things would still be there in 2013. I think they are an absolutely pointless part of a tradition in military thinking. In our third spot, we have the mysterious Russian site. Located in the Siberian tundra, close to the city of Egvikinot. I know I said that wrong. I literally looked up the pronunciation, but there is nothing out there, so I apologize. Egvino, Egvikno. I'm so sorry. Anyways, the area is blurred out on Google Earth, and no one knows why. I've been saying that a lot this video, but it's true. No one knows why. But it didn't always appear like this. At one point, they had edited the satellite imagery. They cut out a section around Egvinot, that place I don't know how to say, and pasted it over whatever they wanted to blur. They thought it would make it less obvious. But apparently on Russian maps, they had the area blurred with a black box. So what's going on in that area? Some say it's harp again. Others say there's a large gold deposit in that area, so they don't want people finding that out. Others say it's a ballistic missile testing site. Coming in at number two, we have the murder scene. Google Earth is a snitch, y'all, okay? A couple of years ago, they caught a murder on camera. It shows a dark figure standing by a body laying down on the ground by some abandoned train tracks. That's all we know. Obviously, due to it being disturbing in nature, they don't want people seeing it. And in our number one spot today, we have the poor donkey. Now, this has to be one of the funniest, yet saddest things caught on Google Earth slash maps. So you know how they have that van with the camera that drives along and it just snaps photos like every second in every direction? Well, while going along, it captured a donkey at the side of the road. Seconds later, if you click down the road and you turn back, the donkey's still there, just now laying on the floor. It had been hit by the Google Earth truck. 
It's pretty sad. Rest in peace, donkey. Starting off this countdown, we have Snow Saddle. Snow Saddle is a major mountain peak of the Himalayas in Nepal. But if you try to view it from Google Earth, you'll see that the whole area is blacked out. Which is obviously suspicious. Why is a mountain peak blurred? What's going on there that has Google blurring it? To this day, no one knows for sure. But of course, there are a number of theories. One theory is that the Nazis had secret expeditions to the Himalayas and found a UFO base in that area. Sounds crazy, right? Well, there have been a number of UFO sightings in that area, so maybe it is a top secret UFO base. Who knows? We don't know. In our ninth spot today, we have KFC. Now, this one is a little funny. So you know how Google Maps automatically censors out any person's face that they end up capturing? Well, they ended up censoring every single KFC. And that's because of Colonel Sanders' face. Google system detected it as a real person. Well, it is a real person. And it got blurred. So the Colonel's face is censored on all KFC buildings and signs. In our eighth spot, we have the Army Logistics Command Headquarters. Located in Taiwan, the Army Logistics Command Headquarters building is one of various military sites across Taiwan that has been blurred out on Google. And I'm sure you all can understand why. They do so for security reasons. Google often blurs out military bases or buildings if they are considered important to a country's security. Like I said, this is just one of the many military buildings blurred out by the Taiwan government and by Google. But in 2019, an update was done by Google and it resulted in a number of these bases being revealed to the public accidentally. The blurring was accidentally removed and people could see the buildings from all sorts of angles. People saw the military bases layout, building structures, and the locations of missile launchers. Good job, Google. But don't worry, now it's fixed. In our seventh spot, we have Tontaco National Park, Chile. Now, why would a national park be censored on Google? Literally no one knows. So this is a privately owned nature reserve. Now on Google Maps, you could see it from afar, but as soon as you zoom in closer, it doesn't do anything. It just looks like a green blob. So why would they censor this area? Well, some say it's because of the fact that it's home to several endangered animal species. Whereas others believe that this place is home to animals that aren't supposed to exist. Imagine unicorns actually do exist and they're just in this area, or like the Bigfoot wild. In our sixth spot, we have the single square. In El Hito, Spain, there is this random square that was censored among the roads and plantations. Now this site wasn't always censored. It became censored in 2007 when just a blur was added to the square and many people were wondering why all of a sudden it was censored. Well, some say that's because a helicopter pad was placed there, so it was censored to hide that, whereas others think that there's a missile silo placed there. As of 2013, the censor, I believe, has been removed, and now all there is to see is an arid stretch of land. But what was going on there for seven years when it was censored? That's my question. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Orsprung Park. Located in the Netherlands, this is a mysterious building that, you guessed it, is censored. But what's weird is that this is the only property in a row of houses that is censored. Why is that house alone censored and not all of them? In older images from Google Earth, the building appears to be covered with a white box. Nowadays, if you search it, it's just a pixelated green and brown area. Again, no one knows why this area is blurred. When you check Google Street View, you can see that it's a brick building, but on Google Earth, you see nothing. Now, it could just be the homeowner wants privacy. Who knows? In our fourth spot, we have North Korea. And of course, North Korea is on this list. I mean, hello, the whole country itself is one big secret. It's no shocker that sections of the country are blurred out. Now, the area that is blurred is along the country's western shore. So people have thought that they are hiding something there. Theory one is that that's where they do weapon tests or that's where they have missiles or other weapons stored. Theory two is that that's where they are conducting a secret military military project. Very vague, we don't know what the project is. Again, it's North Korea, so we really don't know what they're up to or why that particular area is blurred out. In our third spot, we have Marcoll Nuclear Site. Located in France, this site was first constructed in 1952. Now, we've done a number of these Google Earth videos, so 
At this point, you should realize that most nuclear facilities are blurred out. Mostly because these nuclear sites were caught doing illegal things with their nuclear waste, like dumping it into the ocean. Now, this one hasn't done that, but in 2011, it was the center of an explosion. One person was killed, four were injured, one was severely injured. So, I mean, I think you can guess as to why an atomic energy site using uranium and plutonium oxides is censored by the French government, especially after that explosion in 2011. In our second spot today, we have Sandy Island, aka the island that exists, but it doesn't exist. Now, this one comes with a little backstory. This island was discovered by Captain Cook, yes, Captain Cook, not Hook, during his explorations around Australia in the late 1700s. But now, it seemingly disappeared. Back in the 19th century, Sandy Island was noted on a number of maps and nautical charts. It was said to be located in the South Pacific. It was located between Australia and New Caledonia. But it's no longer there. On Google Maps, if you enter the island's coordinates, all you see is a faint outline of what looks like a long, thin island. But there's no landmass in sight. And in our number one spot today, we have Moroa Island. Located in French Polynesia, this island was first used for nuclear testing in 1966 by France. These tests took place until 1996. That's when the French president shut down the facility. Turns out that Greenpeace found that these tests were polluting the waters as far as Peru and New Zealand. In fact, many locals in Tahiti have claimed that they have been affected by the radiation from these tests. Nowadays, the island is off limits to visitors and is guarded by French forces, which is probably why half of the island is blurred out on Google Maps. Or it's because they are still doing these new nuclear tests. We may never know. Starting off this countdown, we have Costa Concordia. On January 13th of 2012, the Italian cruise ship Costa Concordia sadly crashed into underwater rocks. This resulted in the ship capsizing and sinking. Sadly, 32 passengers lost their lives in this tragedy. And Google Earth caught it on camera. It has photos of the ship laying on its side, which is a dark reminder of this tragedy. The captain of the ship ended up being charged with multiple counts of manslaughter. He was sentenced to 16 years in prison as people argued that he delayed the evacuation of the ship and then he fled the ship and left the crew and passengers to fend for themselves. In our ninth spot today, we have the pentagram. The sigil of Baphomet is the official insignia of the Church of Satan. So of course many people consider the symbol to be satanic. Well here we have what appears to be this symbol located on the southern shore of the upper Tobol Reservoir. This symbol is massive. It's roughly 1200 feet or 366 meters in diameter. Many people were wondering what on earth is this for? Some say it's used for devil worship or sacrifices. Thankfully it's not, but it's still something creepy. It is actually actually an abandoned Soviet era camp. And I believe that the lines that we see that appear to be engraved in the earth are actually roads. What a great design, huh? In our eighth spot, we have the aliens. Are aliens real? Do you believe in them? Well, Google Earth seems to have captured this weird being on a balcony in France. See for yourself. Now, what on earth is that? Is it a weird statue put outside to scare away the neighbors or meddling kids? The dude's face looks like it could be the Crypt Keeper from Tales from the Crypt. Did they decide to take these pictures on Halloween? Like, I have so many questions. Or maybe it's a real alien. At this point, aliens probably do live among us, so we're all aliens. I'm an alien. In our seventh spot, we have the disposed bodies. Now, I don't know what's going on here. Was this an art project gone wrong? Did a clothing store shut down and they had to give away their mannequins? Or is this a scene from Goosebumps? There's something so creepy about these discarded mannequins. Like, the fact that they're wrapped up? What if they're the worst? works of a serial killer. I mean, think about it, okay? It's pretty clever to discard of a body that way. You wrap the cut up body parts to make it look like they aren't real body parts. Meanwhile, they are hidden in plain sight. Please don't get any ideas. I just have an overactive imagination. In reality, it probably just was an art project, just a very creepy one. The guy in the trunk. Now, I have multiple questions for this and I really don't know if I want to know the answers to them. First off, why is this guy naked? Second, why is he in the trunk of someone's car? Like, are we witnessing a kidnapping or is he escaping a kidnapping? Next, what's with the dog? It better just be taking a nap, okay? There's just so much going on in this picture. Let's just hope that he was intentionally naked and intentionally wanted to go lie down in his trunk for a bit, okay? Like, this can be used as inspiration for the fourth Hangover movie. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Handy Mandy. 
This next one is not PG-13, okay? As if that naked man was. But seriously, warning, the next one is for mature audience members only. Because we got two individuals getting frisky in some alleyway. The man can clearly be seen with his pants down, and the woman's hand is in that general direction. So you get what's going on. And if you don't, you're too young to be watching this. Looks like Google is out here ruining everyone's fun. How awkward would it be not only to get caught, but having an image taken of you getting caught and upload it online. In our fourth spot, we have the creepy scarecrows. Located in a field in Finland, we have what they call the silent people, which are a thousand scarecrows lined up in a field. This was done by the artist Riho Kila. No thank you, I'm sorry. I'd be too scared of them like coming alive at night or something. Also the name, the silent people, it's creepy. But hey, at least those will scare away the crows, you know, and anyone for a matter of fact. Moving on to number three, we have the mooning. In April of 2018, an English man named Toby Sullivan was out for a walk with his friend when he spotted the Google car. So he did what any normal person would do. He dropped his drawers and full on mooned the camera. Now, I don't know what was running through his mind when he did this, but I definitely did not need to see his peach. Also, for the longest time, his buttocks was uncensored and people could literally zoom into his crack. Okay, it's a little TMI. But when the photo and Toby's story went viral, Google decided to finally censor this guy's behind. Thank gosh. But even with the sensor, you can still fully see this guy's crack, so. Coming in at number two, we have mowing the lawn. Here's another young lad that recognized the Google car and thought, now is my time to shine. This guy was out mowing his lawn when he spotted the car and decided to lift up his shirt and flash the camera. Even though his face is pixelated, you can see he's giving Google a funny face, a little ah. You know, I bet him and his family had a big laugh about that one. But seriously, that meant that every time someone looked up his place to get directions or whatnot, that image popped up. Hmm, boy, oh boy. And in our number one spot today, we have the mannequins. We got more creepy mannequins, folks. This time, we know for sure that they are mannequins and not just wrapped up dead bodies. So you may be wondering, hmm, that's an odd way to decorate your lawn. Where is this, a nuclear testing zone? No, no, this is a neighborhood in Santa Rosa, California. Apparently a neighbor complained, probably a Karen, that this guy's fence was too high for the city's law. So the neighbors lowered their fence, but then in spite he decorated his yard so that his neighbors wake up every morning to this lovely view. I mean, there's no rules against having mannequins in your yard, so should have just let him have his high fence. That's what you get. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the star. While searching through images, someone stumbled upon an isolated corner of Kazakhstan, and here they found a large pentagram etched into the ground, which of course may have set off some alarm bells. The five point star is surrounded by a circle and is very clearly visible. And of course, once the image began circling the internet, people were coming up with only the most wild theories and explanation. In the end, it turned out to be the exact opposite of something sinister. It's actually the outline of a part that was made into the shape of a star. The star is so clearly marked because of the roadways and where there's no road, there's a lot of trees, which makes the symbol stand out even more. It's like the best possible outcome for this one, honestly. A beautiful tree-lined park in the shape of a star. How lovely. In at number nine, we have the Badlands Guardian. Google Earth has revealed many geological anomalies in the past 10 years, and this one in particular is very impressive indeed. Near Medicine Hat in southeastern Canada, Google Earth picked up what looks like a Native American face in profile wearing a First Nations headdress carved into a rock. Ironically, the clear humanoid looks like it's wearing earphones, although what you're seeing is actually a path and oil well. The resemblance is actually quite uncanny. The face seems to have been formed by the erosion of rainwater on layers of rich clay soil. The face has since been dubbed the Badlands Guardian. From a seemingly natural made phenomenon to a man made extravaganza, in at number 8 we have the world's largest letters. So what do you do if you're super rich and you want to spend your money on looking super cool? You already have the latest, well, everything. So you kind of need something unique that money can't buy. Although actually, money can buy you the labor. Hamad bin Habdan al Nayan, <laughs> sorry if I said that wrong, is an Arab sheikh who didn't stop at buying just his own island. No, no, no. He then carved his first name into it so big it could be seen from space. The letters H A M A D are a thousand meters high and two miles long and have been picked up on Google Earth. 
the letters extend into the ocean and form their own waterway system, which is pretty cool. Speaking of cool stuff found in the water, we have the discovery of an ancient tidal fish trap right here at number 7. Back in 2009, Google Earth produced a satellite image of a strange V shaped structure in the water off the coast of Poppet Sands in Wales. Since the image was released, it has been discovered that the structure had been submerged unnoticed for a thousand years or so and was actually a fish trap during the Norman Conquest. The discovery led to an investigation by the Pembrokeshire College, who were able to discern more about the trap. A thousand years, seriously! Keeping it nautical in at number 6, we have the SS Jassim Shipwreck. In 2003, a Bolivian cargo ferry hit shallow water off the coast of Sudan and was partially capsized. The wreckage was previously known of, but it was first made visible to the general public via Google Earth, which plainly shows the ship on its side. This is one of several shipwrecks visible on Google Earth, which is slowly but surely making our waters more accessible and solving several mysteries of our vast ocean. Another personal favourite shipwreck you can now see on Google Earth is the S World Discoverer which is off the coast of the Solomon Islands. Whilst there was little to no bloodshed on these sunken boats, I can't definitely say the same for our number 5, which is the lake that looks to be made of blood in Iraq. Just outside Sadar city in Iraq, there is a blood red lake. While it probably isn't filled with real blood, nobody can quite explain why it's such a vivid red colour. The image was taken by Google Earth in 2007, with many speculating it could be from animal blood by a nearby slaughterhouse, although that would have to be a lot of blood to turn the whole lake that red. Others say it's pollution or sewage, I just don't know. Maybe it's just red, like Hiller Lake in Australia is just pink. Weird though. An excellent way that Google Earth has been utilised in the past few years is in criminal cases. The roving camera has often caught images of some crimes in progress, helping injured parties discover more about their cases. Coming in at number 4, we have two thieves identified by Google Maps, which is a part of Google Earth. A 14 year old boy from the Netherlands was having no luck in identifying two teens who stole his bike, wallet and phone in broad daylight. That was until 6 months later when he remembered the day his bike was stolen was also the day that he saw a Google car driving around his neighbourhood. Lo and behold, as he viewed his local area on Google Street View, he found an image of himself riding his bike with two people approaching behind him. After the boy contacted the authorities, Google Google released the original image to the Dutch police, who found the boys. They turned out to be a pair of twins who were no stranger to crime in the area. Case solved. So, coming in at number three of our top 10 Google Earth discoveries, we have a secret underground layer from the Church of Scientology. Spotted in the New Mexico desert, Google Earth picked up a symbol, two overlapping circles, thought to belong to the Church of Technology, a branch of the Church of Scientology. The symbol, visible only from the air, is near the religion's Trementina base, as well as close to a mile long landing strip. It is thought that the base leads to underground tunnels, eventually leading to a vault containing the works from church founder L. Ron Hubbard. So we are living in the 21st century, in fact we're almost a quarter of the way through it, so you would have thought with all the technology available to us that we will have discovered everything we need to know about our planet. Apparently not. Just over 10 years ago, Google Earth helped biologists discover a new rainforest. Not only that, it is thought to be the largest rainforest in southern Africa. The rainforest on Mount Mabu in Mozambique was discovered by Dr. Julian Bayliss. He was browsing Google Earth to look for medium altitude forests as part of a Royal Botanic Gardens Q project. As he looked, he discovered what looked like an undocumented area of rainforest, which led to research teams exploring further. They soon discovered the forest in the flesh, so to speak, and it is a whopping 7,800 hectares. It also houses some species previously unknown to scientists. Ok, so up next at number 1, we have one of the most important and life saving Google Earth discoveries ever made, and that has to be the location of many of the Cambodian minefields. 
Working alongside charity Halo Trust, Google has been able to map out areas with potential mines in Cambodia. With the help of Google Earth Pro, Halo are able to survey dangerous areas more closely, allowing them a clear and deeper view where mines could be. Then when they investigate the areas, they are able to defuse many of them. The company has said that Google Earth has revolutionised the way we see and browse the world, which I couldn't agree with more. Hooray for Google Earth!